Today we geek out about Arca Parada. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Lee with Geek City USA here, and today we are going to talk about a game called Arca Prada. Now, Arca Prada is a game by Picto Editions. It is a pirate themed game where you are trying to be the first pirate to collect three chests full of gold, or where you are trying to eliminate your opponent, make them walk the plank, swap the deck, or whatever your intent may be. We'll take you over here, I'll give you an overview of the game and how it plays, and then we'll come back and I will give you our thoughts on the game. All right, guys, this is Arca Parada. So first I'm gonna start by saying that this is a prototype copy of the game, but if you look here, I wanted to show these off. These are the meeples, and there's a third one here as well for this prototype. And if you take a look at that, hopefully you can see those. Those are really cool. Each one has a different sculpt, and uh, I just think it's a really nice touch. Now these are 3D printed. I'm not sure how they'll be in the final copy of the game, whether they'll be plastic or wooden, uh, but definitely, uh, I was definitely impressed by these for a prototype. Uh, a lot of times in a prototype, you might get cubes or a little paper standees or something. So that was a nice touch. So anyway, I'm gonna start by setting this up for a two player game. Now what you do is, these are going to be your permanent tokens. You're going to put one face down in each spot on the board. And basically as these tokens are taken off the stacks, when you get to these, they will, they're gonna leave something there for the, for the full game. And then you're going to take these. Now these are double sided. You're gonna see that there's this orange side here and there's also a green side. Now the green side you play uh, is gonna be the one that you usually play with. Unless you play with three players, you're going to throw this one up and it adds a, uh, a token there right here that's not in the, the one, two, or four player game. But you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna put one on each stack and I'm just gonna put two at a time here. Uh, just to be quick, and once you get these up, you're going to put what the meat and potatoes of the game is about. So let's get all these here. There's eight. And then you're going to put these uh, treasure chests. Now if you look, there's going to be two sorts of treasure chests. There's going to be ones that have rum in them, and there's going to be uh, treasure chests full of gold. Now the goal of this game is to... Uh, either, I mean, you can be the first person to eliminate all of your opponent's pirates, um, or you want to be the first person to collect three treasure chests full of gold. So then once you get the treasure chests out, you're going to go back through and you're going to put two more tokens on top of each. Now again, I'd probably, when I usually play this, I'll do it one at a time just to ensure randomness, but for the sake of the speed of setup here, I'll do these two at a time. There you go. Now again, once you set up, you're gonna put one of each pirate on each location. If you're playing a three player game, obviously you would add the third player's pirates as well to each island. But we are only playing a two player game for ex the example here, so that should be fine. Now there's also these Arca Parada cards. Now these are advanced play cards. I recommend playing the game uh, once or twice to get comfortable with the game before you add these. Now if you look, these add different player powers. Uh, you, you would deal these out randomly to each player. And then there's a power at the bottom that you can reveal at any point in the game to do what it says. You know, and each one's a little bit different. For example, this one here, if you discard a rum, a rum bottle, you get two rum bottles. Um, this one, which I always seem to deal myself this one when we play. If you uh, discard three of these tokens, you can injure a, an opponent pirate on anywhere on the board. But typically you would deal these out, one to each player randomly, um, but we will skip that just for the sake of this. We'll do more of a, an intro or a beginner game. Now you're gonna figure out who's gonna go first, so that's a, a random thing, just pick whoever, or if you have somebody in the family that is a pirate, you know, let them go first, why not? But let's say in this case, I'm gonna have uh, the red player go first. You will take whichever player is starting, you will take their pirate meeple off of the volcano island. So in this case, I'm gonna pull this red, red player pirate token here, and I'm gonna put it on that pirate's airship. So start off with an injured player, but you kind of get the advantage for going first. Now this is a Rondell style game. So similar to like a Mancala, um, or even like a Five Tribes if you've played that, you're going to pick up pirates and you can go clockwise or counterclockwise and you will drop pirates off. So for example, you know, if you wanna go counterclockwise, you can go this route, like so, or the other way. And the spot that you end up on, 
you are going to activate. So in this case, let's say I'm, I'm the red player, I'm going first, so I'll pick up here. I'm gonna drop a pirate here, I'll drop a pirate here. And then you'll see I landed on this token. See that one there? And you'll notice there's a little meeple on it. So if there's ever a token that has that symbol on it, you have to end your turn with, that has to be your color meeple. So some of these, like you'll see this one, for example, doesn't have that meeple icon, but this saber does. Now that means you have to end the turn with your player. When you land on this one, for example, this is a saber and this allows you to injure a pirate that is at that location. So this player would collect this token and you see, so the red player has this. Now they will get to, it would be this player here, get to injure one other player that's at this location. So obviously the red player is going to want to uh, injure the opponent. And that one goes over to their airship and is out of the game for the time being. Now this guy can come down into the middle here and bring these guys in. Now there's another step to, um, after you activate the tokens, there is a, a, is a, a combat phase. So what you would do is you'd look to see if at any point there are uh, at least three pirates of one color on a location and only one of another color. So for example, if this would have looked like this at the end, where there are three red and only one black pirate, the red pirate would have combat with the black and this pirate would be eliminated. But in this case, early in the game, you don't really have to deal with that. So now to give an example of what some of these other tokens do, so let's say now this would be the black player. I can go here, and then I'll land here. Now this here, if you can see that there, that is a magic compass, and what this lets you do, this player gets to immediately take another turn. Now, they would not have combat here. Typically, this would be combat, and they would eliminate that red player, but because it's a, the magic compass, they get a second turn. You do not do that part of the action. But, and just so you can see like the different, um, I guess the different actions here, let's say they wanted to move this. Well, I don't really want to do that, because that would be a dumb move. But whatever, I'll do it anyway. So if we were to move this guy here where the bomb is, this bomb would eliminate everybody else who's at that location. So let's say that the, the black pirate did that. These two pirates would both be injured. I don't know why you would want to injure your own player necessarily, but you know, just illustration for the game. So let's take the red player and we'll just go here and here because we haven't activated this yet. This here is a rum bottle. If you ever land on this, you collect it, you'll put it on your airship, and then later on, if you want to skip a space, it will let you skip a space. So for example, let's say, so let's just say the black player is gonna go here. We'll just do this. And there's nobody there, they'll take the saber. Now let's say it's the red player's turn. They wanna go over here to where, this, um, where the magic compass is. Well, they can't, there's only one of them. You can use this rum bottle, you could discard it, and that lets you skip a location. So a lot of times we'll just use, we'll set it where we're skipping. You skip that and then they can go there, which would let this player at this point get to take a second turn, which if they had another rum bottle would be fantastic because they could uh, skip one and then go there. But so let's see, kind of thinking as I go, one, two, three, four, so if the red were to take another turn, they could drop a black off, another one, another one, land here, and then the red player can collect this treasure chest. And unfortunately, it's two rum bottles. Now that's nice because now they have two rum bottles to go ahead and skip you know, one or two spaces later on. You put that face down in front of you. You keep the secret so your opponent doesn't know how good you're doing. But realistically, we really wanted that to be a, a treasure chest full of gold, so that way that red player would be one step closer. Now there's uh, another icon here, another token that we didn't touch on. Now this is the, uh, is the care kit. So if you were to land on that, so let me see if I can get somebody to land on one. Um, well, let's take the black player's turn. We'll go here and here which would allow us to injure a red token and go there. And that goes into the black pirates uh, cache there. Now we'll have the red player. So we'll take this guy, we'll land here and we have the care kit. Now what this lets us do is we can immediately put it in our stash. You take one of your pirates that's on your airship is injured and you can put them anywhere on the board. So in this case, I'm gonna put them here so this guy's not outnumbered any longer. And you might wanna do it even uh, if I were to actually put him here, 
be better later on. So like if we take the black player's turn, well, they wouldn't be able to get that, but the black player can now go and they'll go one, two, whoops, throw them over there, three and four, black player would land here. And look at that, they get a treasure chest full of gold. And they are one step closer to one in the game. Now you keep going around and around until either one player is uh, out of pirates or until one player gets three uh, treasure chests. Now you'll notice here there's also these the permanent uh, tokens that we place down. What that means is let's say this stack were used, everybody went through it, this would become a permanent token that whenever anybody landed on they could activate. They wouldn't actually pick this up but it keeps the island doing something. So in a nutshell that is how you play Archiparata. There's also a one player variant, as well as when you play one, two, or three players, everybody controls their own faction. When you play four players, you play teams, and you take turns controlling who your pirates are. So let's go back up top, and I will let you know our thoughts on the game. All right, guys, that was Arca Prada. So let me just remind you that that was a prototype copy of the game, but I have to say that those pirate meeples were very cool. The fact that each one was a separate mold, uh, it was just a nice touch to the game. So I was impressed that the prototype had that component to it. But definitely check out the final product to get more of an idea of what the final components will be like. So let's talk about the gameplay of the game. So Arca Prada utilizes a rondelle system. So this is something that you see in a Mancala or a Five Tribes where you're going to pick up your play player pieces or all the pieces at one location, you're going to drop them all around and the final one that you drop, that's going to be the action that you take. So on its surface, the gameplay is very simple. It's easy to teach. The different tokens and the different uh, activations on each location, they're not hard to explain. They're not hard to grasp. So it's a very easy game to understand. Now, with that said, there is a fair amount of contemplation that can take place. If you're AP prone, analysis paralysis prone, um, you may find yourself stressing a little bit more as you try to figure out what moves you want to take. But the gameplay itself overall is very smooth, very simple, and easy to pick up and explain. Arca Parada has a good replayability factor to it. Because the board setup is very random, you never know which token is going to be where. It sets up for multiple different combinations from game to game. I think there definitely is more replayability to the game. On top of that, it's easy to set up, it's easy to teach, so it's a quick game to get to the table. And outside of the analysis paralysis potential if you play with people that are very AP in nature the games play fairly quickly so you can get a couple of games in in succession so on to the audience of this game so if you are a fan of pirates and pirate themed stuff this is definitely going to be something that you are going to want to check into I personally love pirates I still think it's a theme that there's not a whole lot in the board game market on I know there are a handful of games but when you look at the number of pirate themed games compared to say zombies or even farming there's a ton of games for farming but I still feel like that we're missing a good amount of pirate games. I feel like we could have a good saturation of that. So this definitely scratches that pirate itch. It's very thematic. Uh, everything that you're doing from collecting gold to executing your opponents or making them walk the plank, you're injuring them, but still the, the same idea is there. They go back to their pirate ship. Uh, the pirate ship is floating through the air for what it's worth, which is you know, maybe not exactly normal pirates that you're used to, but it's still a cool theme, a cool idea. The art is great. The art definitely captures that pirate feel. And the Archer Parada cards themselves that add the, the player powers is very thematic in nature as well. Now, given the ease of gameplay and the ease of explanation, I definitely think this is a game that can be played by all sorts of people. I think kids can easily understand this. Uh, young to old, I think this is a game that is accessible by all. If you're a fan of the pirate theme, if the game play looks cool I would definitely go check it out the game is going to be on Kickstarter and you can get more information there on that page I'll definitely link it in the uh, in the show notes below all right guys that's it thanks for hanging out with us my name is Lee from Geek City USA you can check us out on Facebook Twitter and Instagram and please subscribe if you don't already click that notification button to get notified when there's more videos coming out and definitely check out our other social media platforms thanks for hanging out with us and we'll see you next time